Okay, phone lines are already jammed. Lynn Marzulli, our guest, will be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Okay, very good. To the phones we go, wild card line, Bruce in San Jose, California. Hey, Bruce, thanks for calling. Hey, George. Yeah. First, I wanted to say that Lynn's new book is outstanding. I've read it, and it has a big finale at the end. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate that. Big Finale. Welcome back to the big finale. Wow. Can you believe this? We've now done 12 episodes of the big finale. Going back a few episodes, we had Tom Carey talking about uh, his book about the children of Roswell. That was in episode seven. Episode eight was a round table talking about that book. Episode nine was an interview with Paul Davids, who is the author of An Atheist in Heaven. Remember, the book was about Forrest J. Ackerman. Episode 10 was another roundtable discussing that book, An Atheist in Heaven. Now, last episode, episode 11, we welcomed Nick Redfern. So guess what? Guess what we're having in episode 12? You got that right. It's a roundtable. And we're going to bring back Chad Miles and Gabe Reed in one moment. Now, for those of you who have never listened to The Bruce Collins Show, I always feel the need to plug The Bruce Collins Show. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's on WWPR Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Or it's on Friday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time right here, right here at IPBN-FM. Dot com. That's IPBN-FM.com. Well, there's really no need for me to give that uh, web page out twice because if you're listening to this, most likely you're already listening to IPBN-FM.com. Unless you're listening to this on YouTube. And by the way, while we're at it, that's a wonderful segue because the Bruce Collins Show channel on YouTube is excellent. And we would really appreciate it if you subscribed to The Bruce Collins Show on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search for The Bruce Collins Show channel, subscribe, and you can catch all the shows, whether it's The Bruce Collins Show or The Big Finale. We post them all right there on The Bruce Collins Show channel on YouTube. Now, again, as I said before, tonight we have a roundtable, episode 12, where we're going to discuss the Nick Redfern episode last week where I interviewed him on his new book, Weapons of the Gods. If you haven't heard that yet, you might want to listen to that episode first. Of course, if you're streaming this live, listen to this and then listen to that interview and see if you agree with us. We want to know what you think. And if you want to tell us what you think, you can email me at Bruce underscore Collins underscore show at AOL.com. <laughs> well, that's crazy. Everything I'm saying right now is a great segue to something else. Who to thunk it? All right, folks, buckle up, sit back, get a hot cup of coffee or a cold peach snapple, and tune in and tune out to the rest of the world and listen to the big finale, episode 12, as I welcome back Gabe Reed and Chad Miles. And, folks, that's happening, as I usually say, in a moment. But this week I'll say, that's happening after a Zippy Cheese commercial. ZippyCheese.com How much of a geek are you? 
No, seriously, do you think you're a Star Wars expert? Well, take the hardest Star Wars quiz in the world and find out. Go to ZippyCheese.com and see how well you know the Star Wars movies. There's a quiz for the original trilogy, or, if you dare, take the quiz for the prequel trilogy. What's the name of the creature in the trash compactor in Episode 4? What was the name of the curator of the Jedi Archives in Episode 2? Go to ZippyCheese.com, take the quiz, and share with your friends. There's also a Marvel comic book quiz. Do you know obscure Marvel comic book characters? We'll find out today. That's ZippyCheese.com. Folks, we're just coming off of a ZippyCheese.com commercial. And, of course, that voice probably sounds familiar to you. It's the voice of one of our co-hosts here on the big finale. So let me welcome our roundtable to the program. First of all, he is known as Radio's Lethal Weapon on The Bruce Collins Show. But here he's known as the Ayatollah of Radio. He's the voice of ZippyCheese.com, and he was a former congressional candidate you can find out more information about Chad at chadmiles.com. Here he is, folks, your friend and mine, Chad Miles. How big of a Star Wars geek are you? Yeah. That, see, there that, you go. That voice sounds very familiar. Just that a on repeat? commercial. <laughs> and also, Hello. you may have just heard, he's the voice of many voices on the Bruce Collins Show. He's known as the gregarious one. He is Gabe Reed. Hello, how are you? Excellent. Fantastic, even. Now, here's something interesting that I wanted to tell our audience and also you, uh, Chad and Gabe. You, plural, in that case. Now, uh, we have something new coming to the San Jose Bay Area, which I will not be attending, but I believe it's in August. You can go to thealiencon.com. It's put on by Ancient Aliens. I don't know who, I've never watched Ancient Aliens. I know Lynn Marzulli was in an episode for like 30 seconds or something like that. But I, I, imagine Nick, I imagine Nick Redfern was on it, and the guy with the bad hair is a regular or something like that. Anyways, uh, the, so Ancient Aliens and A&E are putting on a convention here in San Jose called the Alien Con, and it's at thealiencon.com. But here's something interesting. Talk about the big finale and strange coincidences. Last time we had a roundtable in episode 10, episode 11 was Nick Redfern, and now we're in episode 12. But in episode 10, we had a roundtable about Paul David's book, An Atheist in Heaven, which was about Forrest J. Ackerman, also known as Forey. You know, they're going to be talking about Forrest J. Ackerman at the aliencon.com. <laughs> he's, Bizarre. He's, but he's not an alien. I know. I don't know what his connection is. But or the, was he? But 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 I I listed <laughs> I wrote a book about it. There's a new theory. Yeah, I listed the webs. I mentioned the website just so people knew I wasn't pulling their leg. They are actually going to talk about Forrest J. Ackerman. So strange. Hmm. All right, That's now very strange. Now last week I welcomed on the program. But by, by the way, let's skip that. Well, I'll get back to that. But. While we're taping this show, we just did a, an episode, episode six, with a guy named David Abulafia. I don't know if either one of you have heard that interview, but wasn't that guy intense? Did you hear it? I did uh, not no, hear I didn't, it. I didn't hear it either, Oh, man. You should check that out. That was wild. Anyway, so let's move on. Now we're in episode 12. Nick Redfern joined us last week to talk about his book, Weapons of the Gods. Now, personally, my own thought about Nick Redfern is I like his books. The last couple of books, I think, have been kind of misses. The Bloodline one with the uh, 
po- negative blood type being Nephilim and alien and all that. I thought that missed its mark a little bit. I thought this one is a little bit out there too. But by and large, I like his books. I like stuff about men in black, you know, chupacabras, all that stuff. Fascinating. Eh, last couple books, maybe not as much. But overall, I like his work. And I like the fact that he's kind of objective where he doesn't say, this is what I think. He just says, this is what, you know, people say, or this is what I'm recalling about, you know, speculate, speculative uh, items that I want to talk about. But what do you guys think of Nick Redfern? I, I think after you write about 35 books, you start to run out of yeah. <laughs> source material. <laughs> Which which may account for some of the books, uh, the, the recent books being a little less stellar. Yeah. Yeah, the guy is a, a writing machine, and he he pumps out books like it's nobody's business. Um, I don't think he necessarily believes everything he writes about, but like you said, Bruce, he's very objective, and he'll give you both sides, and he'll tell you. Sometimes he'll tell you what he thinks, but most of the time it's just like, here's the facts that I could find. Here's what people believe. It's up for you to decide. That's exactly what I think he's doing. I don't think he buys... That's what I like about Nick Redfern. Yeah. I don't think he buys... He's not trying to sell you something necessarily. Yeah. Unlike some people, whether in fringe in general or Christian fringe, there are some people that I think actually believe what they're saying, but then I think there's a large number of people who don't believe the the thing about Nick Redfern is I think he's probably fairly skeptical, but I also don't think he keeps that a secret. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm right. just writing about it. I'm not saying it's real. Uh so that that's interesting. Uh and I get that I get that idea too. And but he's one of my I think in this genre, he and Micah Hanks are two of my favorite authors and I like bringing them back because they're pretty versatile. You can ask them a question and they know quite a bit of a lot of different things. Um, again, not firsthand knowledge, but just practical uh, thoughts about events that supposedly or allegedly happen. Here's here's the idea of his book, though, Weapons of the Gods. Supposedly, there were civilizations that existed, you know, in the early days of Earth. And of course, probably from that perspective, they think the Earth was uh, many, many, many years old. And that's a subject of another debate. So they think that there were these past civilizations who were slaughtered through atomic weapons and things like that. What do you guys think about the whole idea of civilizations existing prior to Genesis? Gabe? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You caught me off guard. I was waiting for you to go first. (laughs) I can go Um, if you want me. I'll go ahead. Uh, It's... I don't believe that there was civilizations pre-Genesis. You know, you could get into the whole debate of um, the gap theory and all that, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, as far as pre-Genesis civilizations, I don't believe there was such a thing. Um, I do like to think that possibly the civilizations that did exist during or right after uh, the spread of man on Earth, that they were probably pretty advanced, much more than we would give them credit for, which probably accounts for a lot of these weird uh, old finds that we keep coming across. I thought you were going to say old farts. <laughs> <laughs> Those two. I could say about seven things that would be hilarious, but probably make people mad. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Gabe. I mean, I don't think there was anything pre-Genesis, pre-creation. I think the Bible's pretty clear about that. But, you know, I do agree with Gabe. I think this, you know, civilization between the fall of Adam and the flood is, uh, that's up for speculation because the Bible really doesn't say a whole lot about it other than the fact that, um, you know, mankind was very wicked and um, it talks about some of the descendants of Cain and talks about, you know, they built cities and they worked with metal and, and different things, you know, th- things like that that you could, you could read as maybe some, some kind of technology, definitely technology beyond what we would give credit for during that time. Um, 
And then if you read some other in, well, let me just say this. I do believe that, um, in the fallen angel idea of fallen angels came and, and they interacted with mankind during this time. Um, I don't focus every, you know, a hundred percent of my reading in time on it like some people do, but I do agree with that idea. And if you read some of these, uh, you know, uh, extra biblical texts, they talk about these fallen angels teaching mankind warfare and some other things. So I think there's a possibility that mankind was uh, sh- shown things that maybe mankind shouldn't have been shown. And that may have led to, uh, there may have been one reason why there was a flood, you know, man was waging warfare on themselves and other things that were, that were going on. Now, whether or not that was, you know, nuclear warfare, I don't, I don't think that was the case. Uh, like Nick Redfern uh, speculates in his book. Yeah, I want to read one passage from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Now, replenish means to fill it up again. Uh, I don't necessarily believe there were uh, civilizations prior to Genesis, but a lot of those people use that verse. But here's something really interesting about that. I've interviewed, you know, people like Brooks Agnew uh, many years ago. I probably would never interview him again, but he has a lot of weird ideas. But uh, no offense, Brooks. But, uh, you know, people like that, Brooks Agnew, and there are people even here on IPBN-FM.com who used to be Christians. This is, I think, a really important point. They used to be Christians, and they read a passage like that that said, replenish the earth, meaning to put it back from the shape it was. And they'll take that and say, well, that means that there were civilizations prior to Adam and Eve and God started over. Now, let's say that's true. It's not in the Bible. So we don't really need to know about that. And I would say the Bible contradicts that. Yeah. But but the but the point is that let's say that's true and you go off onto some kind of tangent researching that based on that and look at other texts to prove, you know, that, right? That people have lost their faith over that. Because they've gone on some kind of a tangent, and I realize it makes me sound like a hypocrite that I just had a guest on that was talking about that. But the point I'm trying to make is, if it's not in the Bible, it's probably not important for us to research it, and 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 there must be a reason that it's not in. And so, like you said, talking about the Nephilim is another thing, and fallen angels. Maybe a, a certain understanding of what Genesis 6 is might be important. But beyond that, it's gone into now hybrids coming in the last days and giants and underground bases and things like that. If people have actually lost their faith over these types of um, passages going off on a tangent into some direction that God never intended for them to go down. So that's really my point about it. Um, While you were... I just did a little research on that to the replenish part and I, cause it picked my interest. The, I don't know how much of this you want to keep in the show, Bruce, but, um, the Hebrew word for that, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but it has many meanings to fill, be full, to be full, fullness, abundance. So it could just be referring to the fact of replenish. Oh like, yeah. No, fill it up. No, I understand. And the point, <laughs> and the point that I was trying to make is, that a lot of these guys have used that when they were a Christian to research this, right. and they've lost their faith, you know. And, I, and, you know, that's that's tragic. And the reason I said the Bible contradicts that is because you could, av- you could avoid 
all of this speculation, if you just go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5, verses 12, uh, well, verse 12, and it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. It's talking about Adam. Right. And death entered into the world through the sin of Adam. Right. So where where were these past civilizations before Adam? There was yeah. no death. So, I, you know, you could, if you just dig a little deeper in the Bible and go to another book besides, you know, Genesis or another chapter besides Genesis 6, uh, I, I think that you could uh, you could glean a lot from the New Testament. Yeah, and you're bringing up another great point that disproves aliens, because by sin death entered. So if aliens die, then they're somehow impacted by the sin of Adam. I don't think they're aliens. So no, I know, but you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> it's, it's a worldview. And that... and and when the Bible asks us to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, the world in that term is cosmos. So that would mean that if we ever found life on other planets, we would need to send evangelists because they're dying from the sin of Adam. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something interesting. The flip side to that, and the Catholic Church has said this, or remember, pe people involved with the Catholic Church, they said that if... Uh, an alien or an extraterrestrial being came here to Earth that they would be free from original sin from Adam and they would not need the redemption of Christ. Yeah, they're crazy. If you, if you, if you don't believe me, Google it, look it up. And these are these are high ranking Catholic officials. This isn't like, you know, you know, some priest in Detroit. I mean, these are like <laughs> high ranking people. I think that's so that's good... that's kind of scary. If you if you think about that and just, you know, think about the logical conclusion of that. Uh, that's a good way to set up for future uh, visitors to be revered as gods. I and think re re definitely revered. Yeah. And sure. to all Detroit priests, we apologize <laughs> ahead of time. <laughs> Except for that one. I'm okay. sorry, Detroit. I, I used to live there, so it kind of slipped out. <laughs> no, that's okay. Do you think it's odd that a book like Weapons of the Gods, Nick Redfern, that they'll take a biblical story like Sodom and Gomorrah and try to put a UFO paranormal spin on it? I don't that's think it's... all ancient aliens did for the first season. Yeah. I don't think it's odd because it, again, it's a it's a different worldview, and it's they're trying to come up with an explanation for something that is miraculous that they need to be able to scientifically say, well, here's how it could have happened. If yeah. you know, we we need this one piece to be true, that being aliens, and then it can be it can happen. You know, it, it's interesting. If they can do anything to to undermine the Bible, they'll do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you you know. George, it's interesting because they, he was talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, and he said, "Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think that Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt, and that, uh, and that she probably just vaporized." But in the Middle East, there's actually some pillar of salts that the Bedouins call one of them Lot's wife. Are you aware yeah. of that? Yeah. Uh I think I've heard that, and it, it was interesting because he did go into the fact that it, it was could be a translation error and. Maybe that's possibly true, and perhaps the Bedouins call him Lot's wife just because that was the uh, the verbal history that was passed down to them. So they saw him and said, "Oh, well, that must be where yeah, it, it happened." Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm I actually looked up that word when I was listening to the interview, and in, I have an interlinear interlinear Bible, um, and then I went and saw, and looked at that word, and that word actually can mean salt, or it can mean powder. But not Nick Redford said. Uh, Nick Redfern said uh, vapor. Uh, vapor, yeah. In that, no, it wasn't. I mean, at least it, according to my uh, interlinear Bible and my concordance, it, it could be. <clears throat> excuse me, it can mean salt or powder. That, so a, I think he's playing a little fast and loose with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Powder well, would make more sense. <laughs> well, you know, I just thought when you said interlinear, I was thinking Josh Peck in the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> Multiverse. Murder. An interlinear uh, Bible for those who listening who don't know what it is. It, it has the English 
and it has um, the the either the Hebrew or the Greek uh, words right uh, interlinear, right there there next to each other. So you can see what the the original words were, and then it has the Strong's concordance numbers that go along with each of those uh, Hebrew or Greek words. And it's not yeah. to be confused with the intercontinental title in the WWE. Right. <laughs> All right. The the online version of that is uh, blueletterbible.org for those playing the home game. So I want to reference something Chad said earlier, and it is that when an author writes 30 books, eventually you start kind of running out of material. Do you think this is true of, say, UFOs and paranormal topics in general? Are they not as popular today? Do you think they're waning? Do you think they're the same? Do you think it'll increase? What do you think is going on with this type of stuff? Well, I think with this book and everything Nick Redfern talked about in the interview, I've heard before. Yeah. He, he wasn't covering any new ground, with at least what, with what I heard. I don't know if there's something in the book that's new, but this was all... And it, like I said, if you watch the first season of Ancient Aliens, he, all this was covered in the first season of Ancient Aliens. Yeah, and I don't recommend watching Ancient Aliens. By the way, it's a horrible. Especially if you're a Christian, you're just gonna by episode three, you're just gonna explode. But this is all, you know. I mean, dozens of other authors have covered covered these things. Yeah, Eric von Daniken. I mean, you know, blah blah blah. All those people. Exactly. Okay, what about uh, Christians and omens? I I find that there's all kinds of you know things going on in the world today that are being referenced by Christians as being signs that either the apocalypse is here or something bad is going to happen. Do you think that's smart? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think it's smart at all because you can have anything be an omen. Uh, and that just gets into... Uh, you know, superstition, and it's you just keep going down that road. Especially if you're wrong, you know. Eventually, <laughs> if if you know this person and they're and you're not a Christian, you know they're a Christian, and you're a Facebook friend, and they're going, "Oh, a comet's coming, and that's going to be the end of the world." And then five days later, they stop mentioning it because they're embarrassed. And then a month <laughs> later, they go, "Oh, a comet's coming. It's going to destroy the." Earth. And there's literally people on Facebook doing that. By the way, I'm not just, and I mean. You would have to think, what a nutty, you know, belief system this guy has. We're not all uh, like that, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the most recent one was the uh, Mercury. Yes. Going through the sun or right. retrograde is just straight up astrology. It's like seriously, come on. Yeah. I'm gonna tell everybody listening a little secret. All right, are you ready? Yeah. People make money off of YouTube videos. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's the dirty secret. Not so <laughs> secret. Look, people create these videos, and as, you know, the more sensational, the more nutty, the more crazy the claim, the more attention it gets. And exhibit A, flat earth videos. <laughs> yes. I mean, how nutty is that? Yes. And I see people on Facebook all the time. I mean, these people, they really genuinely think that the earth is flat. They really think that. And they'll point to their research. I'm doing air quotes. Research. <laughs> and their research is, I watched, you know, seven YouTube videos about the flat earth. It's crazy. Yeah. And people I don't know. make money. It, it, when I drive to work, I don't ever go over the horizon, so it's got to be flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, somebody on Facebook, and this was a really good point, they started pointing out um, that the uh, a lot of the flat earth beliefs were pagan. And they started to come at it from that angle. And I thought that was pretty smart. You know, for these people who claim they're Christians and they're saying that the earth is flat. There's a, a famous YouTuber who uh, was known for talking about the Illuminati and different things like that and satanic 
verses and things like that in rock music. And very public personality. Allegedly, he ma- he makes over a hundred thousand a year doing YouTube videos. What? And, and there was one there was one wow. YouTube video that he did where he was playing Christian music and he was just dancing around. And when I saw that, I thought, you know what? That makes that that makes things look kind of ridiculous. Why are you putting a video out of that? But then lately, I I believe, unless I heard this wrong. He just came out in a video admitting he has a problem smoking pot. What is that doing on a Christian YouTube channel? You know, if you've got problems like that, go get help. Don't be publicizing that in front of people who aren't Christians. You've made your money, you know, selling the gospel through YouTube. It's like don't don't mess things up for people as a stumbling block because you're screwing around. Go get help. You know, fix your life. You don't have to make it a public circus on youtube that's ridiculous it doesn't bring in the clicks bruce doesn't bring in the clicks Did, have you guys heard about that no no, no. you know who, who i'm talking it? about though right no who is it well say it say it apparently it's vigilant christian really yes really he came out oh mario yeah oh that doesn't surprise me at all do we, do we need to throw allegedly in there or i mean is that- there's YouTube facts. <laughs> no, that's what I heard. He came out on a YouTube video and said he had a problem smoking pot. Allegedly. It's like, yeah, allegedly. Get off of YouTube. Get your life straightened out. <laughs> you know, that, I mean, you, that totally, if you were a minister of the gospel and you were in a church, which is totally, that's a great contrast to what we see on the Internet and true uh, evangelists. If you were an evangelist up on the pulpit guiding people and you admitted you had a problem with pot you wouldn't be preaching next week you would have to go get help you shouldn't be you shouldn't be shouldn't be no i mean and and again people or if you would say i have you know i i confess this is a a secret uh sin that i've had smoking pot and i'm going to be off youtube while i seek help so you you may not see me for a while and pray for me exactly is that what he did or did he just say I have oh, a problem smoking pot oh, and I gar- made a video I, an hour later. I can allegedly guarantee that he's making more videos in the future. <laughs> but, but, it and, sounds and, like that, um, that, that, oh God, what's that, that crazy preacher guy who would... Uh, that that uh, narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> the one who would hit people and yell and he was covered oh, in Oh, Bentley? Todd Bentley? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, what about that guy? Yeah. He's still around. I know. But yeah, he gets into trouble and they, they pull him off to the side and, you know, well, he's going with the counseling. He comes back a week later and he's all, he's been cleansed. Well, and, and again, you know what? I want to make this clear because there may be people listening who aren't Christians. If you mess up, you can make things right by getting back with Jesus Christ. You yeah, know, absolutely. You, I, I don't want people to think that. And also the church ought to accept you even when after you mess up, you know, it, I mean, if your heart's right, you're sincere and you repent and, and you look to Jesus Christ to, to heal you from whatever problem you have, then the, the past is the past. That, that's not the concern. If you make yourself a leader, though, and don the clothes of a preacher or an evangelist and you're doing that kind of stuff, you know, that, that is no excuse for using that as a way to make money. I mean, you ought to step down and get your life straightened out because I I don't think you can truly, sincerely get your life straightened out by continually making money off of, look what I did wrong, look what I did, you know. I don't don't think it's going to work like that. But anyway, I, I wish people the best, but there's so much of that garbage going on, you know, whether... Garbage. Yeah. Yes. Garbage. <laughs> Yeah. Entertainment it, I mean, YouTube is YouTube is like that scene in Star Wars where Obi Wan Kenobi is up on the the original Star Wars movie where Obi Wan Kenobi is up on the hill. They're looking down at most likely, and he says, "You know, you've never seen a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Yeah. We, you must be cautious." That's YouTube, man. There's, and there's some really good stuff. Don't get me wrong. There's some really, really good stuff on YouTube. But there's some really, really bad stuff on YouTube. And I'm talking 
under the label of Christian, there's some super good stuff, but there's some really bad stuff too. So you have to be very discerning when you go on YouTube. And at my Moss Isley Cantina, I imagine Steve Quayle is the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Your droids, we don't serve them here. Yeah. We'll have to wait I outside. Don't like, I don't like you. That's my me and Bruce like trying you. to walk into the bar. <laughs> yeah. We don't serve them. <laughs> Get happy. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. Hey, you know what? I've got a, a ghost story that actually is not a ghost story. And this was on unexplained hyphen mysteries dot com. Now, Brad Sapp, great last name, Brad, Brad Sapp, thought he was going mad when he started hearing a voice in the early hours of the morning. Sapp had been sorting out cans at the Redemption Center that he owns in Carroll, Iowa, when he thought he heard he's been sniffing too much Coke Zero, I think, out yeah. of the cans. Sounds like an exciting job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he just had to tell the reporter that. Well, I was sorting some cans at the Redemption Center that I work at, on the, that he owns. He's probably trying to get a plug for it. Don't go to the go to the Sap Redemption Center, where you can meet a Sap like me. So, so anyways, he was sorting cans at the Redemption Center that he owns when he thought he heard the words "Get out of here" being uttered by someone nearby. Perplexed, he searched the whole building, but found nothing to explain the phenomena. The next morning, he told his wife, who jokingly dismissed the incident as a ghost. But when she too heard someone crying out from within the building's walls, the pair ended up calling the police. Well, I've been playing with these cans here, and I've been hearing voices. The source of the voice, as it turned out, was a 29-year-old former acquaintance who had somehow managed to get himself hopelessly wedged inside the building's chimney. Boy, these people at Carroll, Iowa are sure impressive. Even more peculiar was the fact that when he was eventually rescued, he was found to be wearing no clothes at all, having seemingly removed them before entering the chimney to help him fit inside. Brilliant! The perpetrator, who offered the ra rather implausible explanation that he had gotten stuck while playing hide-and-seek, has since been arrested and is now facing trespassing charges. Wow. Uh, so that ghost you think you hear, ladies and gentlemen, could be somebody hiding in your chimney naked. Okay. The guy strips naked, and he gets into a chimney. Now, why is he doing this? He's trying to break into... A recycling center with cans? <laughs> Naked? How's he going to get the cans out? <laughs> and why would you... And imagine how scary that was. I mean, this guy's an idiot, obviously, but that aside, you're stuck in... And a chimney is not very big. No. So if, I don't know how he got in there in the first place. And I saw the picture. There were pictures that went with this article. And it was... That's a pretty small area to be yeah. stuck in. So I don't... First of all, I don't know how he got in there... And got stuck and lived, and then he's stuck in there for how like a day over a, over twenty four hours. Yeah, what in the world? This is like the nuttiest thing. And he lived. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> on the Bruce I Collins just, show, I just, I just don't understand why he was trying to break into that building. On the Bruce Collins show, we would call that stupid criminal. Yeah, <laughs> our favorite story. <laughs> you know, Darwin Award. You know, yeah, <laughs> almost. Darwin. You know, and you would think it would be great to be a cop just to hear that excuse, playing hide-and-seek. Like, explain that, please. Elaborate on that, playing hide-and-seek. Did, did you see what the what the guy looked like after they got him out? No. Did he have clothes on, I hope? He looked like yeah, a he, put, he looked like a flake, yeah. It, let's, let's, let's just say I wasn't surprised that he looked the way he did after they got him out. Of the is, is him Pat and... Long yeah, hair, exactly. Flannel shirt. Yeah, I was getting me some <laughs> he, cans. He looked like he dropped his doobie in the chimney, and that's why he was going in to try to retrieve it. Well, that could be. That could be. Hey, this week I have a conspiracy question, one for the ages, one that goes back over 50 years. Here's the question. In your opinion, and uh, now, granted, I've never been to Dealey Plaza. I don't know if any of you have, but... Yes. Okay. Through it. Well, then you'll start. 
<laughs> Here's the question. <laughs> Was I said I've driven through it and it's not expert. <laughs> Did anybody try to shoot at you? No. I was moving pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in an open air car? No. <laughs> and did your hair did your head go to the left and back? No. <laughs> down no. and to the left. Yeah, down and to down the left. Down the left. Okay, so what do you think? Was Lee Harvey Oswald the lone gunman? Uh, yeah, I, uh, no. <laughs> The, it, that place, it's it's a very small plaza. The buildings are not very far from the from the the drive area where it happened. There yeah. there was a marker in the road, but I think it's gone now. But you walk drive through there, it's like, no, oh, this doesn't look anything like the pictures. It seems much smaller. But I don't know. There's the magic bullet. There's just so much that could go with that. It's I don't think so. I'm sure it's a good good conspiracy there. I'll tell you what. If it was Lee Harvey Oswald, he's a really good shot. Yeah. <laughs> because to hit a moving target twice like that, that would be pretty difficult. That would be pretty difficult. And then, like uh, Gabe said, the magic bullet. I mean, you don't fire uh, a, a rifle and have the bullet you know, that comes out of the casing in, in that kind of a pristine condition, unless you fire it into ballistics gel or, or something like that. It was the soon as, you know, these rounds are designed to, uh, sort of mushroom or deform themselves on impact. That's why, that's where you get the, the destructive nature of a bullet. Um, and if you don't know, if the listeners don't know what we're talking about, just Google JFK magic bullet and you'll see. Yeah. Basically, they found a, a bullet that was on the like, hospital gurney uh, that was looked perfect, like it was perfectly taken out of the the the, the, the shell casing of the of the rifle. So, you know, there there's a this is like the the mother of all conspiracies, right? And I think there's a reason for that, and because I think there was a conspiracy. I don't know if we'll ever know 100 percent of the truth or not. Do you buy into the, there was a man that looked like Lee Harvey Oswald named, I believe, Harvey Lee Oswald or something like that? Have you heard that one? I've never heard that. No, I haven't heard that. And also, I, and I believe Ralph Epperson is one of the people that floats this theory. Now, I think the most popular one is somebody was behind the grassy knoll, obviously. But mm -hmm. I think I think Epperson believes that the driver turned around and shot Kennedy. And there is a part of the Zapruder film that shows the driver turning around, but I don't see him shooting a gun. I, but you know, Bill Cooper used to r really float that idea, and he he claimed that it was uh, there. Well, yeah, the driver turns, and and if you do if you do watch the Zapruder film, it the driver does kind of turn around. Yeah, but he it if if you can find um, online, you can find a really good stabilized version of the Zapruder film that's fairly recent. I think within the last 10 years, somebody had digitized it and then stabilized it. And at first glance, it, you can kind of, it kind of looks like that. But if you watch it closely, I don't think it shows that. And you, you, you got to remember Bill Cooper, he was talking about this in the eighties and the nineties. He wasn't seeing a stabilized version of uh, the Zapruder film. He was watching the shaky version that everybody else had seen at the time. Yeah. Did you, uh, at some point, there was a, I guess, research done on that as to how that could have been faked with the equipment at the time. And it was pretty fascinating to watch, and I have no idea what it was called or, or to give a reference to go find it again. But um, it, it was a fascinating look that, yeah, that film could actually possibly have been faked. Huh. The Subruder film, really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. That is interesting. I'll have to... Look into that. Amazing. That would be a game changer, wouldn't it? Yeah. It yeah. Would. And I think one of the the telling factors was something to do with the uh, one of the Secret Service guys um, keeping up with the car at the speed it was moving. It just seemed off or something like that. I I don't know. Huh. Hmm. What about the George Bush connection? Do you th Roger Stone is somebody that's floating that around with his new book Jeb. The, and the Bush crime family. You think he had? I mean, he was CIA back then. 
George Bush Sr. has had a very interesting career. <laughs> if you look, if you look at his at his life in totality, I'll just I'll just say that I'm not going to say he was involved with it, but he he's, right. he's had a very interesting political professional. I mean, since he was in World War II forward, I mean, it's been a very very interesting career. And his father had an interesting uh, career, and his yeah. son. Yeah. That's a well-connected family right and there. And I read a book called, um, I think it was Six Seconds in Dallas, and it the, basically the, the, the book ties the assassination to Lyndon B. Johnson. Yes. Um, which would kind of, guilt by association, that would um, imply that George Bush Sr. was involved too. And actually Roger Stone has a book out about the JFK assassination where he believes J- LBJ had something to do with it. A, a lot of people believe that. Yeah. I think even Jesse Ventura, not that Jesse Ventura is an expert on any of that, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny now. It's funny. Here's a guy. He's a smart guy. There's no doubt about that. But he was a pro, pro wrestler. But you almost think of him now as uh, one of the go-to guys for conspiracy because of the, these books he's written. And it's like then I thought about it and I, I pulled back kind of and said, oh, yeah, but he was a wrestler. <laughs> Can we get Randy Quaid on the show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah now, now there's talking. an expert. <laughs> on what? I don't know. <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah, National yeah. Lampoon. Okay. But didn't he, he went to Canada trying to get away from I, yes, he I think did. He came back. something. Or maybe he's still up there. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, and, that's, the, and that's another thing. And that links to talking about Christians reading more into the Bible than than what's there and then exploring those things that's true of you're making a great point both of you that's true of conspiracy theories too because you have some people they're pretty well grounded but they kind of go okay you know i see the world and it's pretty obvious that things are going a certain direction and that from my perspective it wouldn't take much to believe that that's being orchestrated that's one thing then you have people who go way off the wagon and everything is a conspiracy. And and everything that they're fed from certain sources, one of them may be in Austin, Texas, or may not. But they're fed these sources, <laughs> and they believe them. I I, I mean, in it, and this even ties back to a conversation we had in the past where we said this whole conspiracy paranormal stuff is a revolving door. And that seems to be true because I see people on Facebook, they quit. Somebody like, say, somebody maybe out of Austin, Texas, and then new people will pop up and they start getting into that guy, and I, <laughs> then they have all these posts from him. So, that's what is the, it about Texas? I mean, why is it the hotbed for weird everything? I don't know. <laughs> it's like everything. I, you know, I've spent a good deal of time out there, and the people are pretty normal. It seems like. I mean, I, I don't know. I maybe I just haven't gotten whatever bug is floating in the air out there he is not all he is not <laughs> he is not totally well respected in that city though because i know people there based on my work and they and some of them have never heard of him but there's a couple who have and it's like oh that guy my cousin I'm not even sure who you're talking my, about my co- and they and they say my cousin likes him and we can't get him to shut up at family gatherings so it's like, you know, it's kind of like, oh, that's the crazy radio guy, you know, type of thing. So he's a he's a guy, I'm not sure you're talking about, is he on the radio, I assume? Uh, no comment. <laughs> but, oh, 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 but, oh, oh, thank but you, what I'm, okay. But what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, you know, I, I know he has his audience there, but, in, but I, I don't want to stereotype, not everybody is into him in Texas. <laughs> In fact, there are plenty who are not. So. I'm going to go, Alex. Well, you know, it's the your point's well taken because, you know, I think the flat earth thing, I talked about that already. People are buying into that. I've seen people recently on Facebook who have said, those weren't really planes that flew into the World Trade Center on 9-11. Really? Those weren't planes. It was on live television and you're saying it wasn't a plane, and people are saying it was it was missiles, and it was it was um, holograms made to look like an airplane. I mean, just the nuttiest, craziest stuff. And the you know, and and you say this is nutty. And what do they what do they say? Well, do your research. Yeah. 
<laughs> do your research. That's it's up to like you the to big, prove your statement. Yeah, it's like yeah. that's like the big comeback. Well, do your research. They were planes, but they were remote control. The, the that's only, another one too. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that I will say in defense of those people is that part of the reason why they think planes didn't hit the building and that the video was faked is the guy that shot the video was Zapruder the <laughs> Third. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, gentlemen. An hour goes fast. We had a bunch of other topics we could have covered, but you know what? This was an awesome hour. This is episode 12 of the big finale. Chad Miles and Gabe Reed, thank you so much for joining us once again. And uh, I look forward. Actually, the next guest we have is going to talk about Atlantis. So we'll have, wow. we'll, we'll have fun with fun. that in a couple of weeks. And, uh, gentlemen, thank you once again. Hey, thanks for having me, Bruce. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. How much of a geek are you? No, seriously, do you think you're a Star Wars expert? Well, take the hardest Star Wars quiz in the world and find out. Go to ZippyCheese.com and see how well you know the Star Wars movies. There's a quiz for the original trilogy or, if you dare, take the quiz for the prequel trilogy. What's the name of the creature in the trash compactor in Episode 4? What was the name of the curator of the Jedi Archives in Episode 2? Go to ZippyCheese.com, take the quiz, and share with your friends. There's also a Marvel comic book quiz. Do you know obscure Marvel comic book characters? We'll find out today. That's ZippyCheese.com. Folks, another Awesome episode right here at the big finale. Episode 12 has now completed. Well, it hasn't quite completed. Once the music is over, after you hear my voice right now, then this program will have completed. One of the things I used to say over 10 years ago now when I was doing the big finale was my closing sentiments were, we'll see you back here next week as time brings us closer to the big finale. So for nostalgia's sake, I wanted to say that tonight. But I also want to say thank you so much for listening to this program. Thank you for supporting the Bruce Collins Show and the big finale. We have the greatest support in our listeners. You guys are awesome. You guys are why we do this program. As you know, we don't do these programs for money. We don't do these programs for much of anything else except to provide content, provide entertainment to great folks like you. So again, from the bottom of my heart, and this is sincere, this is not written on a piece of paper. I'm not uh, doing this because I think it's going to garner some kind of support from you. Honestly, seriously, we do this program for you. And I want to say thank you for all of your support, listening, I'm blown away when I hear from somebody who listens to the show. I'm blown away when somebody shares that content on their Facebook page. I'm honored. So again, thank you so much. We'll be back next week for episode 13 of the big finale. Hold on to your hats. Or if you don't wear a hat, I realize it's modern times, not too many people wearing hats. Hold on to whatever you need to hold on to. Because we'll be back next week. Take care.